Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. And also, maintenance, you know, is, you, as Linda said, is, was never a good word. But you can keep somebody up, maybe up to two weeks, and we were reading in the guidelines, you know, to maintain that they don't lose what they've gained at the facility. Um, always used to be, well, they're, you know, they've reached their goal, they've got to now go out the door tomorrow, you know, he, goodbye. Um, but now you can keep them in the facility to make sure they're not losing ground. They've done so well because of the good teamwork, the physical therapy, and everybody at the facility. But as we know, it doesn't take much for some people with chronic disease to sort of begin to, you know, lose that um, where they are, lose that level of care. And again, you are allowed to keep people on to maintain, to make sure that they don't have a relapse. Um, Again, it's going to be that for the facilities that they're going to look at the cost of all of this, and, and we understand that. By the way, just to add just one other comment as far as that set of clients is concerned, a group of us at the Elder Lawyers, the National Elder Lawyers Association, the Massachusetts chapter is very active, and we've been working with the folks at the Department of Public Health because so many of the folks that are, that are cycling through here are people who went to the hospital from a nursing home who are already on Mass Health, and we're now at the, at the nursing home. And from the state's perspective, they would love to have those folks, while they're at the nursing home, cycling into Medicare days for up to 100 days, which are, which are paid by all, totally by the federal government as opposed to the Medicaid days that are, that are split between the feds and, and the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So I think there's a lot of, in, that's one of the reasons there's a lot of interest in this from the state's perspective also. Okay, case two. Here We're very we high tech here, you can, <laughs> you can, you can tell. Right? Yeah, that's not my strength. I, I'll, I keep telling my husband that if they ever do a mini mental test and ask me computer questions as the, you know, for our, in our age bracket, you know that's going to be different questions. I said, and I flunked, just tell them she flunked 20 and 30 years ago that it's her baseline. That's her baseline. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is another, she's a little bit older, she's 80 years old, living at home, mild cognitive impairment. She's doing well. Um, even with her little bit of memory loss, she's got family involvement, she's got oversight. She wants to stay at home. She wants to live in her house forever. She's got some congestive heart failure that she's had. And recently, she just hasn't had much of an appetite. Her appetite has changed. She's not eating as much. Um, as a result of that, you know, you get a little bit con more confused. She's not drinking as much. She gets a little bit more... Um, she gets dehydrated as a result of not eating and drinking, but she wants to stay home. She wants to return home. She feels that she's doing very well at home by herself. She doesn't need to go into any of those assisted livings. They're not for her. She went into the hospital. The family saw her. They were concerned. They called an ambulance, and she went in, and she ended up with pneumonia. She had some shortness of breath. Um, she was more confused. Because of the pneumonia, infections, as we know, clearly affect someone's mental status. And she became weak because of her pneumonia, because she wasn't eating as much, she wasn't walking as much. It's sort of this vicious circle, and I think she was spending more time in bed. This is a typical 80-year-old woman who we know has become deconditioned um, within a very short period of time. While in the hospital, they realized not only did she have pneumonia, but she also had some congestive heart failure. So again, she met the requirements. She was in for three nights, and she went to a rehab facility for skill services. OK, as we talked before, she is going to end up going into a skilled facility to get some rehab and also to help with her physical, um, with her respiratory situation. 
She'll have physical therapy with therapeutic exercises and gait retraining because of the weakness she had just getting the pneumonia. We all know that when seniors, something like a pneumonia or a urinary tract infection can just knock them right down. And with mild cognitive impairment, you may even see a little bit more confusion than it was prior to the infection. And along with that, she's going to have respiratory therapy. She's complicated because with the ammonia, she had quit eating, she wasn't drinking as well, she was dehydrated. So they hydrated her in the hospital and ended up with her congestive heart failure. She ended up having an episode that she now needed to be diuretic. She used to diurese her from some of the fluid around her heart. So there's a lot of monitoring that's going to go on there, and she's also going to need a dietary consult for weight loss, and they'll be watching supplements and daily weights due to the fluid, mainly not because of the eating, but to watch to make sure that they're not overhydrating or underhydrating her. It's very important. They'll be looking at her oxygen levels in her blood and checking that, and she is probably going to need a maintenance program after she completes um, the above for to make, get rid of the ammonia, pneumonia she has. The importance of the maintenance program, pre-GMO, she would have gone in, they would have put her on probably PT, got her up um, over, of course, I would say she would probably look to be in a skilled facility for four to five weeks, getting her congestive heart failure in check, making sure that she's ambulating and that she's able to get back to her baseline of bathing, grooming, and dressing with some cues and eating on a regular basis. I think that with uh, Jimmo, that you're going to see that she's going to now provide, have to be provided with a maintenance program. And it'll probably include the entire rehab team as well as the dietitian to make sure that you're maintaining and slowing the deterioration. As we all know, it may progress, but you want to slow that progression down. And that, again, is keeping them on until this program and a professional, again, is going to have to be involved seeing if this program is being documented on, monitored, and the VNA, again, becomes the people in the community that are responsible to make sure this is carried through. As far as um, the long-term care facility goes, I think it's very important that the, uh, I think the nursing staff and the therapy staff and need to understand the importance of that documentation. It was always, always, always important, but I think now that the auditors from the uh, Medicare program have been retrained on GMO and making sure that what they're looking for is that you're talking about what they were admitted to the hospital under skilled service. They're not looking, and I will tell you nurses notes, you'll see ate well, moved bowels, da, 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 but they don't talk anything about her respiratory status that day. They kind of covered everything else, but they forgot to add that. She's there because she had pneumonia and congestive heart failure. So making sure those notes are done to the, to the level of not being turned away, the same thing will happen with the VNA when, they, when she goes home. And again, maintaining her to her previous baseline so she can have a safe discharge home is the goal. That's what she wants. That's what the family wants. Um, and that's the concern is, you know, the facility needs to provide a program so that she can have a safe discharge home. The hospitals do not want to see people bouncing back and forth. That sends up a red flag and that sends up um, l less payment to the hospital. I mean, I know it's unfortunate that everything is driven by the dollar, but the system sometimes operates that way. But I think we as the professionals who are providing the direct care have to remember that this is a person um, who wants to return home and we have to try to make that happen to her, for her so she can be home and she can continue to be in her house, which is her choice and her goal. Any questions about? Questions regarding that case? Can, can, in, in, 
as to this case, could not the case be made if this woman is, has dementia and is starting to slip, mm -hmm. that really the occupational therapy needs to continue during the entire period in the nursing home for the purpose <coughs> of, of, of just making sure that she doesn't continue to slip because the nursing home is providing better care? I guess, because to me, the interesting question is, even if before the hospitalization she was not eligible, she was, she was, she was not getting skilled services, uh, by virtue of her now being in the nursing home, um, can, can she not make the case that the nursing home services on a regular basis, right, are necessary in order to keep her from deteriorating while she's there? Up to the 100 days, it being understood that at the end of the 100 days she's gone. Right. No? You think I mean, that's wrong? I mean, I don't know if she would make 100 days. It'll depend upon her medical needs. But she can be monitored post-infection, post-antibiotics to make sure that she doesn't decline. It's because sometimes you're being discharged the day after you finish your antibiotics and you, the infection isn't clear. And so you, you want to send her home at her highest ability, her highest functional ability to make it successful. And again, the maintenance program is going to be very key and that the BNA following that maintenance program is keeping it going to prevent that decline. Questions? Yes, that's okay. We like questions. Okay. Are you finding, um, in like this case here, the maintenance program is being implemented by the PT or the OT, or mm -hmm. by an aide being supervised by the PT or OT? The in the guidelines, the PT and OT have to put together a program, and they need to oversee it. But a restorative aide or um, an aide can be providing the services. Again, it's what the service is. There are times that a physical therapist or occupational therapist need to do the treatment and need to do um, the, you know, need to provide the direct hands-on. But as long as there is supervision, then yes, an aid or a restorative aid can, can do it. But the documentation is really what's most important. 